scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. I count it a very great privilege and a profound responsibility every time God grants me the grace to come into cities like this and to see to it that these cities receive these divine visitations i don't take it for granted i am what i am because of jesus a man can receive nothing except it is given unto him from above hallelujah so as much as you are celebrating the man let me remind you again that it is because of Jesus that we are who we are and we must be very clear about it. The world must know. So tonight, God will use a man to bless you, but the one who will really bless you is the Lord Jesus Christ. Can we lift our hands in one minute and ask him in this Peniel conference, to give us life transforming encounters whether you are in the overflow wherever it is or you're watching by way of television and the internet or you are here in this auditorium please lift your voice in one minute and ask him for a definite visitation is someone asking the lord for a visitation where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Heavenly Father, we cry again that you will speak to us. We pray that your word will come with power, with grace, with precision. Grant us understanding. And I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that tonight there is the hearing of faith, the working of miracles, and diverse manifestations of the Spirit in our midst. We declare that Jesus alone is revealed and glorified in this place. And we pray that this conference indeed will be a life-altering, life-transforming one. In the name of Jesus Christ. I believe in Jesus. I believe in the ministry of the Holy Spirit. I believe in the Word of God. I believe in the power, the presence, and the glory of God. And the Bible says, now the Lord is that spirit. It says, where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. And so if it is true that he's in this place tonight, then it means there is no limit to all that can happen in your life and in that. Hallelujah. Let me request that while you rejoice, while you celebrate, which is wonderful, the house of God is a place of joy and liberty. Let me please request that as the word of God comes, give your destiny a dedicated attention to hear for the purpose of understanding, not just excitement. Hallelujah. Are we in agreement? Praise the name of the Lord. 
Please be seated. God bless you. Nina Kawo Yabo Sirkin Salama Nina Kawo Yabo Sirkin Salama Kaine Sirkin Salama Sirkin Salama Kaine Sirkin Salama Sirkin Salama Nina Kawo Godia Sirkin Salama Nina Kawo Godia Kaine Sirkin Salama Father, we pray that you will speak peace to our hearts even by your word tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. For my session in this conference, we have a Hallelujah. And tonight I'll begin with a teaching that I titled Spiritual Spiritual Birth. Spiritual Birth. Hallelujah. When Jesus walked upon the earth, the Bible lets us know that and reveals to us that he had several discussions along many lines. Jesus spoke, for instance, about the Father. He spoke about the state of the heart of men in the parable of the seed and the sower. He spoke about family as far as the parable of the prodigal son. You know how that a son left his father and returned back jesus examined the motif of men's heart he came to look at the kinds and the quality of offerings they were given jesus had discussions with the woman at the well he had discussions with um, nicodemus who came to him by night he had discussions with zacchaeus he had discussions with publicans and sinners the Bible literally trails the entire earth walk of Jesus and within the frame of scripture it reveals to us many instances where Jesus had discussions and it lets us into the discussions of Jesus hallelujah and so we are able to learn some of the things the discussions that he had with people and some of the discussions that he had in his crusades and in his conferences hallelujah and one of such discussions was about the subject of being born find that in john chapter 3 the bible says nicodemus came to jesus by night nicodemus was one of the pharisees he was a learned colleague but as he followed the ministry of jesus he began to be convicted knowing that even though they did not agree with Jesus as a counsel personally he was being drawn he looked at the life of Jesus Christ and he began to be drawn to this Jesus and so he sneaks and comes to him by night and the Bible says verse 1 John chapter 3 and verse 1 that Nicodemus there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus he was a ruler of the Jews verse 2 the same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God. He says, for no man can do these miracles that thou doest except be with him. And Jesus takes over the conversation in verse 3. And he says, verily, verily, I say unto you, except a man be born again he cannot see the kingdom of god he was not even responding to the question of nicodemus nicodemus was acknowledging the fact that he was a teacher that in spite of their denial and refusal as a person he's saying listen deep within our hearts we have vetted your teachings we have vetted your miracles and we can only trace your origin to be a man who has come from god for no man can do these things except god be with him 
Are we together? So the foundation of the discussion was an expression of shock and wonder and acknowledgement. What sort of a man is this? They call you Joseph's son. They call you Mary's son. But the results that we see from your life is beyond a man who was born of natural descent. We were also born. We have mothers. We have fathers. How come there is disparity in the manifestation of the spirit within our lives? Nicodemus was not an ignorant man. Nicodemus was a learned colleague. Part of the conditions for you to become a Pharisee is that you must know the entire Pentateuch, the Torah, the five books of Moses of heart. So a man who is speaking, he was a doctor of the law, but in spite of his intellectual acumen, when Jesus up, there was something about the teachings of Jesus. Their teachings were intellectual, but it did not bring conviction. And they know that every time Jesus taught, it was beyond information, it was become beyond academic knowledge. It moved past the gates of their minds into the core of their spirits. And so Nicodemus kept observing. You need to understand that that statement in verse 2 was not just a day's crusade that led to that conclusion. He had carefully followed program after program. And then, unlike them, he was not just an empty teacher. He could both preach and do. They noticed that they were limited because the frame of their dominion was just the intellect. When it came to the place of performance, they did not have the spiritual wherewithal to make good everything they had in their head. For instance, they knew that Je Jehovah Rapha was in their head, but in the presence of sick people, they could not translate that which they had in their mind. Are we together now? So Nicodemus kept observing the man. He first suspected Jesus, then he admired him, and then he became afraid. And he had to summon the courage. And he came to Jesus. The whole discussion was not just acknowledging him. He was probing into something. And he said, if it is true that you are Mary's son, then why do you have these unusual abilities? Are we together now? Because he observed that a man born of a woman naturally, he should have certain abilities and he should not have certain abilities. Would you reduce the volume a bit so that the people can hear if... Thank you. Are we together? That means it is natural for men born of women to do certain things. For instance, it is supernatural for me to speak as a man it is natural very human it is not supernatural for me to walk are we together now in as much as the privilege that is given to men is concerned do i still have your attention it is not unnatural to lift my hands if you see me move my fingers you're not going to clap it's not a sign and a wonder to you it is human so they noticed that as Jesus began to manifest his earthly ministry, they saw both natural and divine abilities happening within the same man. And from an standpoint, had to come to the conclusion that this man is not ordinary. There must be more to him than being Mary's son. So Nicodemus comes to Jesus by night and says, Rabbi, I'm going to use a diplomatic way to talk to you, but my reason of coming here is what is the secret of this divine dimension within you? Because if it is true you are born of a woman, you should not be able to speak to the sick and then they are healed. If it is true that you are only if the origin of your existence is only earthly and biological, from whence come this power to speak to the sea? To speak to the tree to speak to men and immediately Jesus went to the root of his desire he said it is about the issue of birth the basis for the disparity is that there is a kind of birth that has not happened to you yet are we together now verse 3 so Jesus looks at him and he does not answer what his lips is saying he goes straight to the desire of his heart you are acknowledging me as a teacher sent from god who told you i came from god he is it, not because nicodemus necessarily heard jesus say i came from god this is just john chapter 3 
just John chapter 3 so from the chronological arrangement of the synoptics he had not taught long enough for Nicodemus to hear his proposition about his divinity his divinity this is John 3 are we together now the only reason why he suspected that this man must come from God was still in John chapter 2 no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him and Jesus said you are right verily verily I say unto you except a man be born again the issue is not being born the issue is the word again he confused this intellectual person this was a doctor an intellectual again for birth I have never had the possibility of being born again I understand resurrection but I do not understand being born again I even understand incarnation because John the prophet who you call the Baptist came in the spirit and the power of Elijah but I have never heard it's never been a doctrine no man not any of the prophets past had ever proposed an idea that a man already born can be born again and so Jesus says except a man be born again give us the scripture he cannot see the kingdom of God his confusion was made clear in verse 4 verse 4 Nicodemus said unto him how can a man be born when he is old in other words what technology are you introducing to me does he shrink back to become a fetus and gets back into his mother's womb by what means at what point in a man's life do you say he born and then Jesus takes it a step further verse 5 he says verily verily i say unto you except a man be born of water and of the spirit he cannot enter the kingdom of god verse 6 now says that which is born of the flesh is flesh you know what that means you manifest the possibilities of where you are coming from if you are flesh you cannot manifest spirit until you have a way of being connected he said that which is born of flesh is flesh that means you are limited by the possibilities that come from your parents are we together now that which is born of flesh is flesh but that which is born of the spirit is spirit so jesus immediately shows us that there are two kinds of birth number one is called the fleshly birth or the biological or physical or natural birth that which is a product of a husband and his wife and the woman getting pregnant according to the time of life and giving birth are we together now to a baby who will grow using the natural cause of life and the natural process but Jesus is saying there is another kind of birth and that one is by the spirit that anyone who passes through that system there are abilities that will be superimposed upon your natural human frame that you will find yourself manifesting possibilities that are not affordable within the world of men that which is flesh is flesh that which is spirit is spirit and Nicodemus began to understand ah so Jesus you are telling me that there are two kinds of birth that you have had to go through to be the way you are and that as you are now every believer who will eventually reflect you must go through these two kinds of birth are we together the first point I want you to note is that the Bible proposes two kinds of birth that everyone who must be a victor everyone who must manifest divine possibilities and realities must go through must pass through number one I said is natural physical or fleshly birth and I'll tell you the difference shortly number two is called spiritual birth and this is my concern for our discussion tonight and the second thing Jesus revealed is that being born has an implication 
when you are born with it comes certain possibilities and certain potentials is someone learning now I wrote a few things down here that I want you to listen number one that there is a difference between physical birth and spiritual birth number one the first difference between physical and spiritual birth is that physical birth is not a function of your will or your choice in physical birth the one born does not have the ability to choose to participate or to contribute in his or her arrival when it has to do with physical birth it is exclusively the business of your parents and you find yourself in the scene are we together now yes no one here chose as an act of his will that i want to be born you found yourself it was a decision a product of your father and your mother number two the second difference between physical and spiritual birth is that one person alone except for the case of mary one person alone under normal circumstances it would take more than the will of one person for physical birth to happen under normal circumstances are we together now yes i'm going to contrast it with the spiritual birth under normal circumstances a woman may want to give birth but a woman alone except for a unique case like that of mary cannot make that dream come to pass a man may want a child but a man unassisted by a woman cannot make that happen so when it has to do with physical birth you need at least two wheels the choices of two people the man and his wife male and female coming together to make that a reality number three it takes at least nine months for that decision to come to fruition under normal health circumstances that means that when a woman wants a child from the time of her pregnancy until she gives birth is an average of nine months we know biologically speaking so there is a process and it takes time no matter how desperate she is for a child she will have to wait the bible calls it the time of life hallelujah now contrast it with spiritual birth look up please I said that when it has to do with physical birth you did not make any choice but in spiritual birth it happens at the instance of your will you are not just an active participant you are the sole participant to make that birth happen are we together now contrasting with the physical birth you were not there you were not part of the decision for your arrival but when it has to do with this spiritual birth if everybody agrees that you will be born again and you refuse your singular refusal can cancel everybody's decision is someone learning that means every other person's decision are only supporting the sole decision for spiritual birth to happen depends on you number two spiritual birth happens at the instance unlike physical birth that will take time will take a long process the moment according to scripture you acknowledge the lordship of jesus believing that he died for you believing that report the bible lets us know and according to the authority of scripture that eternal life is imputed into your spirit that moment sanctification can happen gradually transformation can happen gradually but the fact that you become a bona fide recipient of the life of it happens at that instance are we together now this is very very powerful now in physical birth there is something called aging and we understand aging in our world to mean the depletion of the quality of your life 
from a biological standpoint the depletion of the quality of your strength so when you say a man was born in 19 25 we will most likely shout because we don't expect a young man bubbling and jumping by reason of that longevity as measured from the time of his birth are we together now we expect that no matter how healthy there must have been an appreciable deterioration in strength in quality in vigor when you see a young man of 18 losing memory it is a problem but when you see a man of 118 losing memory you will forgive him because based on the longevity as measured from the time of birth it seems to be allowable yet in spiritual birth the bible says the kind of life that we have received does not sustain the ability to deplete with time it is god's own life it is not life that is subject to the vicissitudes of life though our outer man perish he says because of the quality of that which we have within us the same way the son is older than every one of us here yet the son has not lost its intensity its quality and its power are, are we are we following now I'm taking this slowly because I want everybody to understand. So Jesus is discussing. I hope you know that that discussion was not a conference. That discussion was an evening time. A man came to meet Jesus and the Bible just gives us an idea. How John got to find that out we do not know. Truly it must have been by the Spirit. Because the Bible does not record that John was part of that discussion. And yet with precision, he can bring to us the discussion that happened supposedly between two people. Perhaps he was somewhere. Because the Bible calls them eyewitnesses. They saw the things that happened. And he was able to peep into this noble discussion. Did you know that what became the foundation of our understanding the life of God was not even preached on a crusade ground. It was a discussion between an intellectual person who was frustrated but in sincere need of answers and the almighty God incarnated through this person called Jesus. So we're discussing the subject of birth. The foundation was the invincibility of Jesus. The divinity of Jesus how that his divinity so overshadowed his humanity when he walked upon the earth you could see that he was flesh and blood yet all of the results from his lives when demons saw him they screamed they never called him the son of Joseph they never called him the son of Mary they identified him by his divinity it had so swallowed up his humanity are we together now Jesus for you now go with me to John chapter 1 and we'll begin our reading from verse 7. If someone is learning, say amen. amen. John 1, let's start from verse 9 for sake of time. Theologically speaking, what we call the Gospels are four synoptic eyewitness accounts are we together? Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And all of them gave eyewitness accounts of the earth work of Jesus, capturing different moments in his earth work, miracles, his teachings, based on their perception. So Matthew has a presentation of Jesus. Are we together now? And then um, Mark has a presentation of Jesus. You find out that Matthew is a lot more genealogical. He takes time to tell us some of the things that were happening within the sociology of that time. Mark goes straight into the manifestations of Jesus. From verse 1, chapter 1 in Mark, Jesus is already preaching, healing, and doing so many things. Luke takes the time to examine his humanity. He captures the census that was happening, meticulously giving us room to understand all the things that happened before his arrival. But it was John who approached it from a very interesting standpoint. John did not approach it from the earth work of Jesus. He went straight to the divinity, say, in the beginning. The only other place we find that expression is Genesis chapter 1, where Abraham was given an understanding when he saw the glory of God and he now documented the Pentateuch are we together in the beginning was the word 
and the word was with God and the word was God it says the same was with God in the beginning verse 3 says all things were made by him and without him was not anything made that was made verse 4 now says in him was life and it says that life was the light of men are we together yes verse 5 now says very quickly the light shines in the darkness and the darkness comprehended it not then verse 6 now has a little twist there was a man still talking about God sent from God he said his name was John seven says the same came for a witness to be a witness to the light that we through his witness might believe are we together and then it goes on and on and on verse 8 says he was not that light he only came to testify of that light I like verse 9 it says that was the true light that lighted every man that cometh into the world notice now he's talking about birth here again every man that cometh into the world there is a light component that is given as a gift from God now we go to verse 10 and then he says he was in the world and though the world was made by him the world did not know him verse 11 he came to his own and his own received him not but he leaves us here that not everybody will reject him there are some people who will receive him it says but as many as received him he gave them power to become mm -mm, power against it's power against principalities the first power you receive when you come to him is the power to become the power to become to become something you were not born with the power to become don't ask me how I became anointed power to become a weak person can come to Jesus and among the many things you receive is power to become an ordinary child becoming a prophet an ordinary man becoming an apostle becoming a great man when you see people manifesting supernatural possibilities it's because they access power to become power to become watch this let's finish that scripture he gave them power to become sons of God even to them that believe on his name now this is where I want us to go to which were born so whether you are part of those who become or not in any case you were born you have to be born to remain natural and you have to be born to be supernatural he's talking here that whichever category you be, you belong to there is one thing common between two of them birth which were born in one case born of blood and the will of the flesh but in another case born of God so he's talking here about birth that all of them were born but this category of men who have now become there is a special kind of birth he says their birth is not just out of blood their birth is not just out of the will of the flesh their birth is not just out of the will of a man but that these ones were born of God to be born again means to be born of God to be born again means to change paternity to be born again every child reflects the dna that comes from his father to be born again means to be born of god hallelujah as simple as it sounds ladies and gentlemen most believers the scope of our understanding about the new birth experience is simply its ability to secure eternity after now and we have downplayed the potency of the life of God that comes to the believer and reduced it only as a an insurance to make sure you are not in hell so the average person who stands confessing Jesus does not even understand the extent of translation that is happening in the realm of the spirit nor the implication that has happened to him by reason of switching eternities 
He's teaching Nicodemus. You've seen me walk as a sign and a wonder. You've seen my invincibility. You've seen situations and circumstances bow to me. The secret is encapsulated in another kind of birth. He calls it born again. Now, John gives it perspective that to be born again means to be born of God. To be born again is beyond reciting a salvation prayer. To be born again is beyond being convicted of sin and just walking out feeling guilty. That physically nothing may happen to you, but in the realm of the spirit, there is a real transaction that with understanding it can manifest physically that you can literally know who has been born and who has been born again hallelujah when you look at people physically without them opening their mouth you may never easily know the difference between a professor and an illiterate you cannot judge by their physical appearance in fact the illiterate may respectfully speaking maybe even look sharper and smarter the distinguishing factor is when both of them are allowed to converse because then it will not be a function of their body it will be the quality of their minds am i right on that so when we stand physically you don't know who is born and who is born again until situations and circumstances come the one who is born shows you the limitation that which is earth of the earth is earthy but one who is born again can outsource an advantage from a realm that is not human and now begin to command possibilities that dumbfound men dumbfound principalities and powers this was a discussion Jesus with Nicodemus tonight we are discussing birth everyone in his lifetime is allowed to taste of at least one of these two births that you can hear me now is a chance or is an implication that the first birth has happened to you but that there is an advantage that can come to you when you choose to be born of the spirit to be born of God, to be born again. Many believers have answered the altar. They do not understand the implication of being born again. Are we together? The implication of being born again. Now watch this. Back to my example on the professor and the ordinary person. If I looked at someone who had spent 30 years learning two PhDs, had headed all kinds of institutes and I look at him and I call him some kind of demeaning name simply because he was wearing some joggers in the morning most likely that person will rebuke me and say you better don't allow my size intimidate you sit down let me tell you a little about what I've done I had PhD right from 1980 another PhD by 1991 his body does not show it but I will have to test him using various references that probe into his understanding he will bring all kinds of certifications and photos perhaps and then when i bring all kinds of difficult projects the way he effortlessly solves them at the end of it i will say truly you may look small but indeed you are a professor are we together many many believers carelessly say i am born again and they do not expect anything unusual there is no difference to the first fleshly born you and the second one who is now born again do you know why because for many of us all that happened to us respectfully speaking was just the recitation of an altar call prayer and with it you are not going to hell again and that is true but then many leave not understanding the value, the excellency, and the quality of what is within them. And because that consciousness and that awareness is not there, Satan will still act as if he does not recognize that you are born again. The vicissitudes of life still treat you as though one who has just had the first kind of birth. And yet we continue to say we are born again. But that which should follow a person who is born of the Spirit, 
born of God, the attesting signs do not show. Nicodemus was frustrated like many well-meaning believers are frustrated today. There are many well-meaning believers. They have verses in their head. They have scriptures in their head like Nicodemus. And they have secretly attempted to pray for the sick. They have secretly attempted to do what they say the Bible said should be done. And nothing has seemed to happen in their lives. And then like Jesus, they observe others and say, Come, I used to know this man. We grew up from the same place. What is the difference? I am a Christian. I go to church. Nicodemus was frustrated he did not hide his frustration he wanted an excellent life a life of victory and grace and it was far from him every time he read the Torah the Pentateuch he was far from the experience of it finally he found a man who was an embodiment of everything in his head I respect Nicodemus because unlike many of us Nicodemus was humble enough to come to Jesus most people will prefer to be failures in pride than to humble themselves and become victors in experience this is the reason why i took out time to acknowledge the several graces the men and the women of god here it takes a lot of humility recognition and a passion to grow to shelve all of their programs their busy schedules and to come and sit down and to hear the word of the lord that was the attitude of nicodemus notice nicodemus said we know he didn't say i know the arrogant ones too knew but they were too proud to come and ask questions they just they said no 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 there must be something but we are too proud we can't come and meet jesus most likely nicodemus was older than jesus but he came to him and he said when it has to do with the issue of these possibilities I sincerely humble myself I am a doctor of the law I acknowledge it but I place it down rabbi never called him. he called him teacher we know that thou art a man said no man can do these miracles except God be with him thank you hallelujah except God be with him and then Jesus began to speak to him immediately. He said, the issue with you, Nicodemus, is not that you cannot be great. The issue is there is a kind of birth that needs to happen to you. You have gone through the first one, passing through the womb of your mother. But you have not gone through this second kind of birth that is called being born of the spirit that is called being born of god because if it is true that you go through that birth coming out from that birth experience you will also come out with something called the power to become the power to become now watch this believers most of us have been shown a life and a destiny of grace and color representing the purposes of god but what you do not know is that that picture and that mandate was not allocated for the one born from Jalingo. it was not allocated for the one born from nigeria that possibility was only kept there for the one who dares to be born again the one born from Plateau or Jalingo or Adamawa or Lagos cannot fulfill that. The vision of the church you saw is not just for the one who was born as the second born or the third born. No, the disciples as fishermen could not fulfill that great commission. They were ordinary men. Not until the spirit came upon them. Look at the first sermon of an unlearned fisherman it has become a doctrinal model to help us understand salvation so peter stands on the day of pentecost and says listen we are not drunk with wine this is only but the early hours of the morning but this is that look at his theological construct he began from joel then he went to the psalmist and he ended his sermon by saying let it be known to you o 
that this same Jesus whom you have crucified have today been exalted as Lord and Christ. My Bible says they were caught to the heart and they said men and brethren, some of you are brethren, some of you are men. Whoever you are, men and brethren, what do we do? Because we don't know where to categorize you now. You are men but you are men plus. There is something that has certainly, so the only name we can call you is brethren. Men and brethren. What do we do? We have seen a manifestation in your life that is beyond that which is affordable to ordinary men. Watch this. He says, repent for the remission of your sin and you shall receive this promise, that same promise, the power to become. For the promise is unto you, he says, to your children, your children's children, as many as are far off, even as many as the Lord will call. And 3,000 people who were already born became born again. Another instance, Acts chapter 8 and verse 5, the Bible talks about an ordinary man called Philip, that Philip went down to Samaria, verse 5 of Acts chapter 8, and the Bible says he preached Christ unto them. Watch this, verse 6, that the people gave heed with one accord, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. The same ordinary Philip. Remember it was Philip who was answering the question that led to Jesus saying, I am the way. He said, have I been with you so long, Philip, and you do not know me? Now, that gentleman was no longer just a confused person like Nicodemus. He had found the secret. The secret was to be born again. And Philip was now commanding the same possibilities that he saw in Jesus. So much so that the Bible says they saw, they heard and they saw the miracles. What were the miracles? Give it to us. Verse 6 now or 7. The Bible says for unclean spirits, questions. I hope you know those spirits were still there when he was confused and frustrated. But now, he's been born again, had signed his name in the realm of the spirit. The unclean spirits crying with a loud voice came out of many that were possessed with them and many that were taken with palsies and that were lamed were healed. The Bible says, verse 8, and there was great joy in that city because a man who was born again carried the content of his spirit man, not just his blood, no, the content of his spirit man and he literally took it to Samaria and turned that place upside down. Ladies and gentlemen, what you call the gospel is beyond a message of evangelism. What you call the gospel is beyond a proposition to escape hell, as important as that is. What you call the gospel is beyond the revelation of the compassion of a loving God. That is, these are all components of it. But you need to understand that at the back of God's mind, when he proposed Jesus to come and die for us, it was not just to translate us from hell to heaven. That is very important. It was not just to make us the beloved alone, but it was to grant us access to something the Bible calls the way. It's a kind and quality of life that no man was born with. There's no man who is born with that kind of life in fact here's how the same John says it in his epistle he said this is the record that God had given us eternal life but that this life was so structured that until you encounter the Son you cannot have that life so when people come to church man of God if it is true that you are born again like you will tell me it is true i am educated life will call for you defending that truth show me the results of your being born again as against your result of being born i have seen the results that come with your being born i want to see the one that follows your being born again i've seen you cry that is normal with those who are born show me the victory that comes with those who are born again i've seen you walk as slow as you can which is very human with those who are born but show me the excellency of speed show me the excellency of supernatural progress that is only privy to those who are born again hallelujah 
so the bible puts it this way it says he that cometh from above he that cometh from above not he that cometh that means above is not the only place you can come from you can come from many other places but now this result is only connected to he that cometh from above the bible says is above he that cometh from above is above all ladies and gentlemen my life changed when i understood the implication of being a child of god a son of god born again once upon a time the man standing before you was a little baby who was being celebrated people rejoiced on that glorious Tuesday morning I had arrived I was not born again I didn't come born again I came born privileged to have my mother and my father alive I can imagine the joy on their face when that tiny baby arrived on that Tuesday morning but that was not the victorious one no that was not the one demons will run away from no that was not the one who will change nations no the you that was celebrated and wrapped in that not even the jesus who was born was the one who saved us it was the one who was filled with the spirit empowered transformed the christ listen carefully no it was not the moses that was born that brought deliverance it was moses that was born again it was not the Abraham that was called from all of the Chaldeans as an idol worshiper. It was Abraham whose name was changed. Another name was given to him. It was not Peter the fisherman as Cephas who was that one who preached such a powerful message. It was one who had met Jesus and now had met the Spirit of God. Jesus walked for 30 years upon the earth as an ordinary man absolutely nothing supernatural but the bible says at jordan when he came to be baptized john who was a prophet looked at him and said behold the lamb that takes away the sins of the world and heaven was still quiet until jesus was baptized in water the bible says and as he came out of the water the heavens were opened that was a typology of being born again and the spirit descended upon him and a voice spoke when you read one of the accounts it says this is my beloved son in whom i am well pleased and he commanded creation to hear him can i tell you the one who creation has been commanded to hear it's not the you that has the date of birth that you have no demons have no respect for that one no demons have no respect for the one who is just wearing suits and wearing this there is a kind that was put that threatens hell the one who is born again the sons of Skiva thought it was just about being an adult or inheriting priesthood and the Bible says one time they came and gathered some demoniac and they said we adjure you by Jesus whom Paul preaches and they learned a bitter lesson that is a lesson for believers today they said Jesus we know Paul we know May I add, Joshua Selman, we know. You better add your name in this wicked world. You better add your name in that list. It says, but who are you? He was asking people who were alive. But he said, as far as we are concerned, spiritually, you are not yet born. What gives you the credence? Listen, listen. The reason why spirits operate illegally on earth if they are not in partnership with human bodies was because the earth was not created for them so when you want to have dominion over the realm of the spirit have you registered your arrival in the realm of the spirit that i am of god i am born of god you can be living physically ladies and gentlemen yet in the realm of the spirit you are not known you are not recognized at all
and there are many who would dare to do a lot of things who stand and say in the name of Jesus I command these demons to go in the name of Jesus I command the sick be healed just because you saw pastors doing that or just because you read it in the Bible it takes more than the reading of it Nicodemus had the knowledge what kind of Bible study would you give Nicodemus a man who was a doctor of the law he was intelligent par excellence yet the realm of the spirit had no obedience to him his frustration was what brought him to Jesus respectfully speaking could there be a frustrated preacher in this place today you're saying I love God with all my heart I lead many to Jesus but the performance that divine life the invincibility that comes with that divine life is not yet speaking in my life this is why God put this conference together we're talking of birth and don't tell me apostle but I've given my life to Jesus Christ hold on just follow me carefully <laughs> do you know what eternal life is John 17 3 let's read together I'm under the shadow of your wings your influence is all over me I am under the shadow of your wings your influence is all over me John 3 17 please give it to us let's read together if you can see it ready one to read eternal life is beyond reciting a chant this is eternal life that works that produces that eternal life is that they might know thee the one true God and Jesus whom thou hast sent that was why he used two expressions seeing the kingdom and entering the kingdom except ye be born again you cannot see the kingdom but except ye be born of water and of the spirit of water and of the spirit of water and of the spirit you cannot enter the kingdom of god there's no time to show you this as adumbrated theologically speaking from the old testament you see the exodus of egypt of israel from egypt is a prophetic adumbration an adumbration means a foreshadow a foreacting are we together now using a story using a scenery of the old now let me just say this well this is the anglican communion putting this there are people who are intellectuals the bible has many three basic layers when you are studying scripture number one there is the historic or archaeological layer of scripture that means you can study the bible as a historic material you can study the bible as an archaeological material the bible there are people who are not christians but they might be doing certain phd thesis and would need to make reference to the bible because of its ability to capture dates and times are we together now so there is an archaeological and historic layer to the study of scripture the second layer to the study of scripture is there is a doctrinal layer are we together where from the stories the parables the events that happen you can piece together doctrine it comes from the latin word doctrina it means a body of truth that disciples a student to become like his master are we together but the third layer which many people do not explore is there is a prophetic layer to scripture where the holy spirit can give you a unique encounter and bring a meaning out of a scripture that does not apply to any other person except you are we learning now so three people can read the same scripture and see three different things doctrine should be the same but there can be a layer added to it for instance the sign of jonah was not a doctrine 
it was Jesus that came and brought a prophetic meaning out of it there was no way the sign of Jonah would have been understood to adumbrate the death the burial and the resurrection of Jesus we know it as the punishment of a disobedient prophet but Jesus said there is a greater meaning to it that although that was physically speaking a punishment but he was for acting something the same way the fish could not hold him that is how the grave would not also be able to hold the son of man hallelujah I said that for a reason because you see the exodus what you call exodus Moses came as a deliverer a prophet that would lead the people from Egypt the place of captivity are we together now to a land flowing with milk and honey that was his prophetic assignment but notice the progression the first thing that happened was they had to be delivered from their taskmasters I mean are I, am I am I am I are we together now and Moses had to be born within the system like Jesus came and was born in the earth are we together now and then he challenged Pharaoh and with a mighty great hand he brought deliverance but watch this there were three levels of deliverance if you study scripture the first level of deliverance was deliverance from Egypt and Pharaoh that began in the process of the Exodus but it did not stop there until they got to the Red Sea because Egypt still had the power to pursue them are we together now until they got to the place where they could pass through the water that was a prophetic type of the new birth experience for as long as they passed through that water the Egyptians attempting to cross it was a no-go area the sea covered them and buried them once and for all Miriam captured it in her song she said I will sing unto the Lord for he has triumphed gloriously the horses and his rider has been thrown into the sea from that day never did they see their enemies in that similitude again but that was not the end of it they were already born of water but there was still another experience because you see that they had left Egypt but the mindset the thinking the ideas of Egypt was still in them when Moses went up the mountain to have some time with God he returned back and met idol worshipers nobody externally influenced them by themselves from the residue of the old man that was with them they proposed making an idol with the gold that they brought from Egypt so Jesus says to now experience the kingdom you must be born of water that separation that old man but then you must be born of the spirit for you to understand that you will need to examine the ministry of the Holy Spirit there are many things that Jesus said about the Holy Spirit beginning from John 14 John 15 John 15 16 he called him the comforter here's what Jesus said he said I have many things to tell you but ye cannot bear them now how be it when he the spirit of truth is come he will guide you into all truth there were many other things Jesus wanted to tell them but in that state it will be unfruitful he says when the Holy Spirit comes among the many things he does is he will reveal to you he will take that which is of me and reveal to you listen these people had been with Jesus but they were not empowered enough to represent him but when they were officially handed over to the Holy Spirit as captured in the day of Pentecost that officially began the dispensation of the Holy Spirit on earth the Bible records very clearly that these were men and women who though ordinary though unlearned they began to manifest extraordinary supernatural possibilities is it the healing of of the man at gate beautiful is it the healing of the man who was crippled from birth are we together all kinds of supernatural extraordinary manifestations of the spirit and to tell you how powerful this born again issue is there was another Pharisee now not Nicodemus that Pharisee was more vicious than Nicodemus Nicodemus did not persecute the church he only kept his frustrations but there was another Pharisee in the book of Acts called Saul you see that these Pharisees they surprised because they had knowledge but the performance was not there now this strange Pharisee called Saul the Bible says he obtained letter of the high priest and he was going to persecute the church are we Bible students then the Bible says that Pharisee was already born 
But watch what being born again would make that Pharisee become. On his way to persecute the church, the Bible says a light hit him and knocked him down. Is that true? And he heard a voice that said, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? He says, and then he says, you cannot kick against the bricks. And Paul said, who art thou, Lord? He said, I am Jesus whom thou persecutest. Paul became blind as Saul. Is that true? He was sent to go to the house of Jude Ananias now and that he was going to be told what to do there and that man who was already born as a pharisee in his confusion only having visions ananias comes to his house and says brother paul jesus whom you met had sent me that i would pray for you to regain your sight but not to leave you like that to introduce you to the ministry of the spirit although you had met jesus now you need to meet the spirit and fast forward that man everything changed in his life after 18 years spending time within the wilderness of arabia he returned back not as a pharisee he returned as a sign and a wonder when peter and other apostolic council saw him they said who is this man where are you coming from what happened to you our experiences are similar yet you were not there when jesus were you not the paul that we heard about who was persecuting the church and he said no that was the former one now i am born again born again born again born again born again the same one who persecuted listen this guy was so born again that if you ever gave him even five minutes to talk you'll be in trouble even if you were the pilot you were the ruler he would almost convert you with his conviction hallelujah born again born again he was so born again he was not afraid to die it was him who said for for me to live is christ and to die because i can only die from the first born the, the first birth the second death does not bring the second being born again does not bring death again no that one i will live eternally so for me to live is christ and if i die physically i'm still alive i have gotten the life that is indestructible that was his orientation Hear me, ladies and gentlemen. Many of you have heard of propositions across the body of Christ and around the world of the move of God, the revival that is coming upon the earth and the fact that God has called us to a life of glory and grace according to John 10.10, 10, the thief cometh not but for to steal, to kill and to destroy. He says, but I am come that ye may have life and that you have it more abundantly. Hallelujah. And that the Bible tells us that this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. We have been born of this indestructible life paul was mentoring the church in ephesus and he says we have been raised up together with christ and we have been made to sit with him far above principalities powers thrones dominions every name that is named not only in this world but even in the world to come look at how he took out time to give us a sound exegesis of how exalted how lifted we are the bible says in ephesians 1 and verse 3 that God has blessed us with all spiritual blessings and it is routed to the believer through the office of the Christ but you see all of these things that we have grace and peace he says be multiplied unto you according as his divine power hath given us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that has called us into glory and virtue, the Bible says, whereby had he given us these exceeding great and precious promises, that by them we might be partakers of his divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. All of these great blessings that have come upon the believer will never happen until and unless, number one, you are born again. Number two, exposed to the ministry of the Spirit. It is the spirit of life who is able to guide men into the experience of the kingdom, the experience of power, the experience of wisdom, the experience of grace. Do not miss our subsequent sessions tomorrow morning and then night. I will be sharing with you other dynamics. Tonight we are just examining the issue of birth. Every champion you see in the kingdom is born twice. 
so you have to place the first certificate as given to you by the teaching hospital that brought you but destiny will ask you for the other certificate that one is not in a paper that one is resident within your spirit man that is the one demons want to see you have been showing them the one that was from a teaching hospital and they tear it into pieces that's not the one that moves the realm of the spirit someone is about to show them the other one and say let no man trouble me ah that i am born again i am born again to be born again means to be born above to be born again means to be born above above the vicissitudes of life above situations and circumstances that he that cometh from above is above all more love more power more of you in my life more love more power more of you in my life there was a young ruler let me wrap up now there was a young ruler that the bible simply calls a rich young ruler this one was not a pharisee but he was a successful gentleman i've done a teaching on it do you know what it means to be rich then to be young then to be a ruler you have conquered life significantly because it takes time to be rich if you are rich and young that is dominion over time rich young ruler that was not the name that was the credential of a young man he was rich he was young and he had dominion he came to Jesus watch this and he says good master what must I do to inherit eternal life since it is true I am rich I am young I am a ruler but I know there is something missing my wealth my physical influence and the advantage of my age has not been able to do anything supernatural it cannot heal the sick it cannot mentor people with all my money i cannot command loyalty to go to a desert and have a crowd come there is something more and i have studied you and studied your teachings and you have attributed these possibilities to eternal life so in addition to my being rich in addition to my being young in addition to my being a ruler there is something more i want good master what must i do to inherit eternal life we'll wrap up tonight's teaching by answering that question jesus looked at him and said why do you call me good no man calls me good except god there is no man who is good except god so you understand that this result is beyond the realm of men every time people acknowledge the origin of supernatural results jesus accorded them he gave them an applause he said you are a wise boy truly nobody is good except god since you know you call me good master that immediately tells you where i come from and it tells you the origin of this invincible life that i possess good master then he now gave him something a very serious test go and do this gift to the poor he said this i have done right from my youth yet he was still young meaning that gentleman started making progress really early and jesus said one last thing go and sell all that you have listen no jalingo taraba listen we are discussing eternal life now we are discussing being born again do you know what that means to be born again does not add to what already is in you you will have to be willing to relinquish everything there he says no you do not add the life of god to all of this that you have gathered it does not work like that go and sell all that you have give it to the poor then come empty when there is nothing again in yourself come and follow me i will show you how to receive eternal life the bible said the man left sad because he had many things <laughs> ah, 
Ah, eternal life demands that anything that is not the life of God is dethroned until Jesus and his purposes is enthroned above fame, above pedigree that when you stand the singular credential will not be my knowledge will not even be my fasting and my prayer the singular credential that you stand with as the basis of everything is Jesus the moment you are adding any other thing doesn't mean you don't practice them but priding in the fact that I am what I am because I went to school I am what I am because I speak well you are still in the realm of the rich young ruler you are not ready to follow when you empty yourself of everything and you come say listen I, I am a good preacher I speak well I fast well I give well Jesus commended him and said but you are still full eternal life does not come to men like that business with God demands total emptiness where you are void of yourself did John not get it right that I may decrease decrease in my perception that when you look at me what you do not what you see is not a celebrity with a plethora of achievements uh -uh. those who are born again are people who died before because you see the way to the throne is the cross if you tell me you're on the throne I will say show me the cross you pass through uh -uh. you cannot be seated on the throne without showing the cross that killed you is it not in the Bible I have been crucified with Christ the one who says we are seated with Christ also said I have been crucified with Christ Galatians chapter 3 he says nevertheless I live yet not I but Christ that lives in me and this life that I live in the flesh that is the body I live by the faith of the Son of God there are many people who recite salvation prayers but there are few people who are willing to give up everything and to be crucified with Christ indeed this is the reason why the potential of this life you have received does not manifest like the rich young ruler we come before God and men with all our achievements I am intelligent that's why I am a fasting giant that's why it is because of the abundance of my Bible study that's why and Jesus says you have done well but not enough to carry my life you want to carry my power and host my grace you must be so empty you become like a mirror that when men look at you they don't see me and you they see me when men look at Joshua Selman you are a true carrier of eternal life to the degree to which the more they look at you the more you do not become the center of attraction you become a mirror reflecting his power his grace his glory with all humility careers of the divine life where then is our boasting where then is our bragging no we stand as soldiers of the cross possessors of his life with one singular assignment revealing Jesus to the nations not our titles not our credentials are we together he honors us because he's given us a greater platform to reveal him please men of God co-laborers in the gospel let me say this already we must learn to crucify this flesh and hide it behind the cross this desire to want fame and to be a celebrity as wonderful as that is it will shortchange you from walking in the authenticity of the life of Jesus when Jesus walked upon the earth even though he was God in every way and considered it not robbery but for the purpose of his assignment he humbled himself is it not in your Bible and the Bible says let this mind be in you which was in Christ Jesus so thank you for all the accolades the honor that you gave me as I walked in but you see behind at the back of my mind I have no singular assignment except to see him glorified except to see him revealed it will be a total waste of your time if I am here tonight to only show you an anointed man so that you will see a man that God is doing mighty things with if for any reason there is something to see in my life that my life will perhaps be an inspiration to you of what God can do with men who really die the way we live is to die so don't tell me you are alive show me the grave show me the grave where the former you died mm -mm. there is no man who died without a location even Jesus his grave was there 
where is your own grave as a testament that you have died hmm. died to your flesh died to pride died to self-aggrandizement died to lust died to everything the things that that so distract us I'm showing you the implication of eternal life is beyond just reciting a chant Lord Jesus Lord Jesus and you go back smiling is beyond carrying a title respectfully speaking pastor apostle those things are physical credentials the realm of the spirit respects the grave because that is where resurrection happens if you are to be born again you must be able to show me the grave this is where the former me died this is where the lost driven me died this is where the sensual me died this is where the me full of pride and full of myself died this is the me carrying ministry on my head died but this is now the me who stands to represent Jesus the me who has gotten to that realm there were two thieves on the cross they were all thieves one was at Jesus's left one was at Jesus's right one took responsibility he said shame on you we are thieves you claim to be a righteous man and there's no proof and the other one rebuked him and said we're being judged justly this man is innocent the moment Jesus listened to that he said you today you will be with me in paradise preachers listen I want to make one more statement and then we'll pray and I want you to be very sensitive what I'm about to say may disturb you, but I want you to listen. The one question people ask me everywhere I go is what is the secret of the grace of God upon your life? I have thought about it sincerely so that I will give an honest answer. I used to think it was my fasting. Now I know it is not. Make no mistakes about it. This is a man who fasts. I used to think it was my prayer. Now I know it's not about it. Mm -mm. Nobody prayed more than the scribes and the Pharisees. I used to think it was the dexterity of my word study. Do you have the pentatouch of heart? This was a man who had all. He fasted. He prayed as much as the law gave. And he was a man who was intellectually sound. Yet he came to Jesus and said, I'm not seeing this work. And Jesus said, there is something. We need to go beyond the gates of your fasting, beyond the gates of praying, as important as that is, and get to your heart. The greatest secret of doing business with God is a heart that is broken, a heart that is surrendered, a life that is completely dead. Write it down. I give you a guarantee. Show me a man and you will find who has fasted without power. Show me a man and you will find who has prayed without results. Show me a man and you will find who has studied without results. But show me a man who is broken and dead. I will show you a man who has found the fountain of power, who has relevance with God. Please listen to a key that I give you tonight. I am not in any way downplaying these spiritual exercises, but we live in a world where we have built monuments around these things. And we have confused the generation because many of them have done these things. Well-meaning, like the rich young ruler. Yet they have found out that that power did not come and they are asking questions that's why they may seem to suspect anybody carrying it because they are saying I've obeyed everything you said you can fast from a standpoint of lust and pride you can fast from a standpoint of self aggrandizement you can pray go and read about the prayer life of two people in the Bible one who was a prayer warrior but in pride full of himself the content of his prayer was the glorification of self even though he was not the issue of prayerlessness it was that his your heart condition vetoes any and every spiritual activity your fasting only gains potency when it's connected to a heart that is truly dead dead to self only to live to reveal christ your prayer only becomes potent when it is coming from a heart that is truly surrendered I submit to you the greatest secret behind the hand of God upon my life I have seen people who have fasted more than me who have prayed more than me the highest I've seen in my life I've shared it here I think was a gentleman who fasted for 400 days six to six 
I wrapped up the last day with him. And after those days, he was still looking for power. Can I tell you, I'm giving you a shortcut by this message tonight. Not a shortcut to distract you, but showing you the authentic pathway to carrying this invincible life and manifesting it in experience. I agree that you have made an altar call. I agree that spiritually it's a fact that God has given you that life. But the reality of it is at the mercy of your death in experience. You must pass through that water. You must pass through the ministry of the Spirit. And the first assignment of the Holy Spirit is not to teach you. The first assignment of the Holy Spirit is not to empower you. The first assignment of the Holy Spirit is to reduce you until self dies. When the Holy Ghost came upon Jesus, he began a journey with Jesus that finally culminated in the cross. Your own Holy Spirit that came upon you seems to be leading you away from the cross we need to verify what you received because when the holy ghost comes he does not tolerate self being alive man of god please listen to me woman of god please listen to me jalingo taraba in addition to all the graces that will be speaking to you all through this conference i bring you a word the secret to an excelling life an indomitable life is to transcend beyond your physical birth the one that you have in your birth certificate it only qualified you to have the second one because the protocol is you must have the first birth to have the second anybody who is not born of a woman cannot be born of the spirit that is the reason why angels do not experience this salvation the condition salvation is for men and the condition to be a man is that you must pass through the womb of a woman the only exception was Adam not even Jesus escaped it Jesus is with his body today in heaven the body that came through the womb of Mary and that is the reason why we are sure he will come back because he's not looking for another body to come back he doesn't need a virgin to give him another body we are sure of his imminent return because he left with his body if he left his body behind we'll be in trouble because where will he get another body this same Jesus the Bible says he will return the same way we saw him go he went with his body if he returns on earth it's not illegal he still has a material body the man Jesus not the spirit Jesus is the one seated at the throne today why do we go around evangelizing and preaching it is not just to satisfy the guilt or to, to, to bring ourselves into some spiritual consolation that we are ministers we do this number one because we love Jesus number two because we have found out that the escape from sin death defeat failure is not found in an advice is not found in counseling beyond counseling and therapy the secret to the problem of men on earth today is not just a therapeutic management system as important as that is men must translate to a point where they accept the substitutionary sacrifice of Jesus by the way can I recite for you what the Bible calls the gospel of salvation the gospel of salvation is the revelation of the father's love revealed in and through the substitutionary sacrifice of Jesus man and creation being the object of that love are we together to the intent that whosoever the Bible says believes on him he should not perish that blessing is for whosoever whether you are from Adam our black white I forgot to tell you that physically um, you are only born a baby but spiritually any age once you are alive, it's still valid to be born again. You can be born again at 12. You can be born again at 90. Provided you are alive, it is never too late to be born again. And in this second kind of birth, there are no miscarriages. It is accurate and precise. Tonight, I have come to call someone. Your destiny has been beckoning on you. You know within your spirit that you are born to live a victorious life. That the prophetic destiny of Taraba, Karasu Kadia, I just said that and I just saw a wind just blowing, blowing, blowing. 
a wind blowing now make the altar call we'll subsequently have the time just to pray and minister to people but let me just respond to two things I'm seeing in the spirit now and I want you to help me I'm seeing a wind and I'm hearing the number 17 one seven there are 17 people right now as I'm speaking the Lord is saying I am calling you into a deeper spiritual experience and the anointing of the Holy Spirit is resting on those 17 male and female 17 people um, I don't know how many how much time we have just a few minutes when that happens may I please request that you bring I'm about to pray and release that grace I want to have the people here 17 of them the Lord is ministering to me enough is enough your destiny beckons on you now I stretch my hands I don't know where you are inside outside right now please whether you are an usher or not just bring them bring them out we look to Yahweh Yahweh our hope is Yahweh, Yahweh. We look to Yahweh, Yahweh. Forever Yahweh. Ali bashaleka koska de balakosia. We look to Yahweh, Yahweh. Our hope is Yahweh. Yahweh, we look to Yahweh, Yahweh, forever Yahweh, Yahweh. There is a separation that is happening to you. Ah, he said, whilst you were in your mother's womb, from before thou camest, I called you and ordained you to be a prophet. I stir up that wind. I stir up that well. In the name of Jesus the Christ of God. Now the Lord is that spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. hallelujah please listen to me ladies and gentlemen for as long as you are willing to be born again, born of water, born of the spirit, behind the exploits of ordinary men is the spirit of the living God, the mysterious power of the Most High. He told Mary, said, how shall these things be, seeing that I know not a man? And he said, the Holy Ghost shall overshadow you and he says that power shall come upon you that you are endued with power it's time to get out of a realm of an ordinary life an ordinary christian life a resultless christian life the bible says 
I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us for the earnest expectation of creation awaited the manifestation of the sons of God not the explanation of the sons of God not the excuses of the sons of God Jalingo hear me Taraba hear me the north hear me it is time for a kind of people to arise pastors respectfully speaking in addition to that which we know it is time to contend for something that will bring glory to the name of the lord before he gives us power against he gives us power to become power to become power to become i just saw like fire resting on the heads of 10 people and the lord is saying that fire it will ignite your spirit man i don't know where you are but let that fire rest upon you this is that that fire that was on the day of pentecost let it come upon your head come upon your destiny come upon your head come upon your destiny light coming on a man of God I don't know who that person is but I saw that is a man of God and I saw like a measuring tape it was just elongated I don't know who that man of God is but that light the Bible says that was a true light oh may that grace that illumination let it rest upon you right now let it rest upon you right now let it rest upon you right now help him please let it rest upon you right now let it rest upon you right now. Let it rest upon you right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Now please listen. Please listen to me. With the permission of His Lordship, the Bishop, let me give us three assignments within the course of my session. Please. I came to walk us through a spiritual journey and I plead that we cooperate. Everyone, please hear me. Between 12 midnight today and 6 midnight and 6 in the morning, find any one hour at least and pray in the spirit non-stop. Just do what I'm asking you to do. I came to stare something. You can have it as a prayer chain if you want to. Some can take 12 to 1 one to two let me tell you the prayer content the prayer content is not power the prayer content is let everything that has been exalted above christ die within my heart are we in agreement please discipline yourself this is a week of spiritual emphasis and retreat at the permission of his lordship i want to plead and make that request hallelujah so you can select any one hour between 12 and 6 you are traveling in the spirit and your cry is lord everything that has exalted itself above you the flesh the lusts and everything let it be crucified so that the reality of this life can find expression within me that is assignment number one assignment number two that i want to give you is 
don't you think there is enough crowd of people inside here and outside there is still one more person in Taraba that prophecy needs to beckon upon to be in this meeting the second assignment is you are going to do the work of an evangelist both online and offline tell someone God is moving mightily in Taraba some of you may need to call your colleagues in ministry the whole chapter it's not much study John chapter 3 the discourse of Nicodemus as far as birth is concerned and let God grant you illumination by the Spirit hallelujah for sake of time we may not have the time to prophesy and pray for the sick now we're just starting I understand there is a session tomorrow let me please plead you need to write exams there are institutes that are age dependent if it's the internet you need money for data but the church gives you the permission to come as you are and sit down only to be opened to be transformed hallelujah praise the name of the Lord come with your heart open tomorrow morning if you must come here by 6 in the morning to reserve a space don't worry it is better to stand for three days or one week and have your destiny transformed forever hallelujah and then again at the permission of the bishop tomorrow night as God grants grace it will be a miracle and impartation service where you will be receiving an unction from heaven that something will come upon your life your destiny your ministry it will be a redefinition of your spiritual reality hallelujah for those who are here in front I stretch my hands the graces that you have received in the name of Jesus may they usher you into deep realms of spiritual activities and any spirits that may be interrupting your progress I command liberty now 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 in the name of Jesus liberty now now for the Bible says now the Lord is that spirit and where the Spirit of the Lord is there is liberty here at Peniel 2023 I declare liberty every chain that has bound your life your destiny be free now free to serve the living God free to live a victorious Christian life in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus now hear me except for those who are still manifesting under the anointing for those who are strong that can return to their seats they can gloriously return to their seats rejoicing because I want to make the altar call right now listen please no movement stand I want to say something very important before I make the altar call With all due respect and with honor to priesthood and all the men and the women of God here, please allow me just share one burden in my heart. If they are still under the anointing, just leave them so they don't fall on one another. Watch this. Can I tell you, no matter what you put as your credential to measure success, if souls are not the top of the list, you are not doing much in the kingdom in order of priority soul winners are before revelation giants soul winners are before fasting giants before intercessors the greatest and the highest index for measuring success for the believer is the abundance of many who have been turned to righteousness on account of your life your fasting your prayer your Bible study, your diligence in the things of the Spirit must translate into abundance of souls. John chapter 15 and verse 8, he said, Herein is my Father glorified. When ye bear much fruit, so shall you be my disciples. John 15, 16, you have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit should remain in order of priority a man of god's greatest assignment regardless the nature of the office and the call is to see that many are turned to righteousness you may have listened to my message redefining the great commission the first cadre of the great commission is soul winning world evangelization 
the second key of the great commission is discipleship the methodical mentorship of believers to attain stature and growth in the spirit the third and final keda of the great commission is societal or territorial transformation hallelujah you are not fulfilling the great commission if these three aspects are not captured in your life but my burden for tonight is that we genuinely become soul winners no matter the kind of anointing i have if it does not translate to abundance of souls coming to the kingdom it has nothing to do with what office you are calling every opportunity to draw many to jesus is a welcome development when it has to do with souls so let me challenge respectfully speaking and beckon on the body of christ we must be intentional about drawing many to righteousness you only disciple people who are saved you do not disciple unbelievers hallelujah tonight the bible says the lord added daily to the church as many who should be saved every addition in the church is for salvation and then transformation by the word and then empowerment to be witnesses every addition i repeat is for salvation and then transformation through discipleship and then empowerment to represent the purposes of the kingdom and tonight there are many of you here you were invited graciously by the media by men and women and by the angels inviting you here noising it abroad Peniel 2023 perhaps you are in the overflow or somewhere scattered around or following online by way of television or the internet and Jesus is telling you that it is time for the second birth you have done gone through the natural biological birth thanks to your parents but he calls you to a more superior birth is called a spiritual birth is called a rebirth and I'm going to call, I will count one to five for someone who is saying, Apostle, I cannot lie. I'm standing before Jesus, naked and unashamed. I need to make it right with Jesus right now. I want to count one to five and hurriedly I want you to leave your seat and come and stand in front of me here. Let it be from the depth of your heart and let it be sincerely so. You are saying, I need the second birth. I need to make it right with Jesus. I want to begin my journey towards the experience of knowing God through His Spirit and living a victorious, supernatural, and excelling life. Nicodemus asks Jesus. The rich young ruler asks Jesus. You have been asking. Now he has come to answer. I begin my counting now run to the front as i count one taraba is this how you celebrate salvation he who are weary come oh softly and tenderly jesus is calling holy no seeing us come home come home Come Celebrate them as they come. Softly and tenderly, Jesus is calling. Calling, oh, sinners, come home. Come. Apostle, I want to come, but I'm ashamed. There's nothing to be ashamed of, my dear brother and my dear sister. Come. Come. Those who are following, watching from across the globe. You're watching from Europe, the United States, Africa, the Caribbean, Asia, the Middle East. Same Jesus. The same Lord is rich unto all. Come. Come. There is always room at the cross. Let's keep celebrating them for one minute as they come. Come. Hallelujah. Come. 
the hymn writer says at the cross at the cross where i first saw the light and the burdens of my heart rolled away it was there by faith i received my sight and now i am happy all the way my dear friends brothers and sisters we stand here ministering to you as not people better than you for it is the election of grace that has kept us and brought us where we are it is a privilege and an honor to midwife your encounter to help you when a midwife is careless what is born is called Mephibosheth it was the carelessness of a midwife that destroyed the destiny of that man he has trained us to be effective midwives so that that process of the rebirth will be accurate and my Bible says in Romans chapter 10 from verse 9 and 10 that if thou shall confess with your heart the Lord Jesus and believe you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe with your heart that God raised him from the dead you shall be saved it says for with the heart man believes unto righteousness and with the lips the mouth confession is made unto salvation speaking to Nicodemus he said for God so loved the world 3 and verse 16 that he gave his then one and only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life verse 17 says for God did not send his son to the world to condemn the world but that the world through him might be saved he does not condemn you he is ever faithful to give you a beginning a new beginning if we say we have no sin the Bible says we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us but if we confess our sins that God is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. I salute you for making this noble decision. May I please request that you lift your right hand high above your head as a sign of surrender. And if you are not able to make it to the front here, wherever you are scattered, you can also lift your hand as I pray with them. You can pray right where you are. Please shout this loud and clear. Believe it. You are not just reciting a poem faith in your heart in the lord jesus is that which is translated to your salvation say lord jesus one more time say lord jesus tonight i have heard your word i desire this second birth i desire to be born again i desire to receive of your life right now i confess that jesus you are my savior you are my lord you are my king i believe that you died for my sin i believe that you rose again for my justification right now i receive eternal life into my spirit and I declare that the power of sin Satan hell and the grave is broken over my life from tonight and forever I am saved I am a child of God I go for whatever and backward never amen keep your hands lifted father here at Peniel 2023 under the leadership of the Anglican communion we thank you for these souls that you have brought to Jesus thank you for doing this in Taraba thank you for doing this in our midst we thank you for every one soul that has been saved everyone that has come to Jesus the Bible declares that as many who will come to you you will in no wise cast away Lord Jesus I declare based on the authority of Scripture I declare their sins forgiven and I call you bona fide recipients of the life of God that the power of sin Satan hell and the grave let it be broken over your life from tonight I empower you to live victorious Christian lives you go forward ever and backward never amen now here's what I want you to do there are a number of you so I'll plead that you move slowly so you don't ramp on one another there are counselors waving their hands I see them waving their hands and this is another one are they taking this road too okay all of them are going this way let's celebrate all of them as they move 
to my right which will be their left taraba is this the best you can do for jesus i've got a message from the lord hallelujah a message unto you i bring it is recorded in his word hallelujah it is only that you look and leave look and leave my brother leave look to jesus christ and leave it is recorded in his word hallelujah it is only that you look and leave now the blessing for tonight may the lord bless you May the mighty hand of the Lord rest upon you. Amen. Let the week of this conference be for you weeks of prophetic encounters. Amen. Encounters through dreams. Amen. Encounters in the place of prayer. Amen. Encounters in the place of the study of the word. Let a spiritual circumcision happen to you in the course of this conference. Amen. And may the Lord give you mighty testimonies. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. The Lord bless you in Jesus name. Hello, scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, my son, attend to my sins, incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well that you will keep these words in the midst of your heart that no matter the circumstance your eyes are going to be fixed on these words and as you have been blessed we will tell you to share this message be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed and then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like for us. Thank you.